Hi everyone, welcome to Corporate Review. I'm your host, Ara Tapuzian. I'm the City of Novi's Economic Development Director. And we're here with Donna Malonio, and Donna works here at Detroit Heavy Truck Engineering. It's a mouthful, if everybody knew how many times I had to say that. But we're finally here. Thanks for having us come by and pay a visit. Thank you for coming, and that's such a long mouthful. We call ourselves DHTE, D-H-T-E Detroit D-H-T-E, Heavy yes. Truck Engineering. And I'm sure nobody ever screws that up. Because Never. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's so long. So give me the background on the company. Um, this company was founded in 2010, okay. and uh, we have our CEO is Mike Liang Yu Huang, and he was doing a lot of international um, trade with China and he is a former automotive person, but he was going back and forth to his hometown in Hunan province in China. Okay. And there was a definite need for Western engineering, and there were three areas that he found a definite need for. One was mining trucks, another was uh, gearboxes, and another one was wind uh, turbines. Okay. So Mike started looking into what he could do to produce some of these engineering needs to fulfill a need, and he did an internet search hmm. and came up with a couple of very well-qualified consultants in the mining industry. All right. So he hired them, and he hired a person who has extensive wind turbine engine and gearbox um, history and background, mm-hmm. uh, and he's actually from the agricultural market. So they put together a company and some proposals and went to China and got a contract to do a 400-ton mining truck. Yeah, these are not the kinds of trucks that you're going to see on Grand River. Right? And we're going to look yeah. at some pictures, too, throughout the show. But the uh, the scale of these are really hard to imagine. These are huge. What you're talking about on Grand River is an off-highway vehicle. Right. What we're doing is vehicles that are in open pit mining. And okay. to give you an idea of these vehicles, they are roughly 32 feet across. They are about 25 feet, 25 to 28 feet tall. 51 feet long. When the dump body is up, <laughs> it's a five-story building. Wow. They have a 400-ton payload capacity. So these vehicles are only used in open pit mine. There's actually nothing in Michigan large enough for these vehicles, but yeah. they'll be sold throughout the Midwest and North America. Okay. What? And we've talked offline about where these trucks are used in, in different countries, and a couple natural questions come to mind of, how do you, and, and we don't make them here, no. but you design them yes. here, and how does, it, where are those getting made, and how do you ship one of those? In pieces. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. We are a design and engineering firm here, and okay. we do not have any of the manufacturing responsibilities. That is our customer. Right now, most of our customers are in China. Okay. But the intent is that we will design it here, and then we'll have a sales force. And our sales force, actually, we have a sales office in Gillette, Wyoming, where these vehicles are used. Okay. Um, These vehicles will be manufactured in China, but shipped globally. They're shipped modularly. Trying to get that word right. Good word. But they're designed to be knocked down, shipped in pieces to the mine, erected at the mine, and then the tires are assembled at the mine and everything else. Talk about the turbine a minute, because I guess I didn't realize that as much as, when I think of you guys, I do think of these big, huge, massive trucks, but talk about the turbine a little bit. That is a little bit in the future. We haven't started that, but the trucks use a gearbox. Okay. The turbines use a gearbox. And so there's a natural fit there, and that is something we intend to explore in the very near future. Okay. We're going to walk around. You're going to show me around a little bit, and we're gonna, you're going to hand me off to, to one of your key people here, too, after we, we take a break. But let's take a look at the lab. That'd be great. And show some of the stuff that's going show on. Show you some of the analysis that we're doing. Yeah, great. Let's go. All right, Donna, this is the lab. This tell is us, it. Tell us what goes on here. This is our electrical engineering lab, and John and George are some of our electrical engineers, and what they do here, they are responsible for the wiring, the harnesses, and everything electrical on the truck. Okay. And that includes everything from the taillights to make sure that the brake lights go on when you press the brake, that we have enough power to raise and lower the dump, that the vehicle is going forward and backward. So their involvement is very intense. We do different displays and do all the testing here. Sure. When you look at a dashboard of a car, <laughs> you've got, you know, certain gauges. Well, we're taking yeah. it to the next step and we're doing more electronics. Good. Okay. 
put not that, easy stuff. Not easy stuff. Not easy stuff at all. How many employees here total? We have a total of about 28 right now. Okay. Um, just about everybody in the building, with the exception of two or three of us managers, are um, engineers. Yeah. We have predominantly uh, bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, a couple of doctorates in our building. It's a very technical field, and yeah. we hire a lot of professionals. How hard is it to um, find the right skill set to do this kind of a job? It's quite difficult. Um, Part of the reason we're in the Detroit area is that Detroit is known for the automotive engineering sure. and just a lot of, a wealth of talent in this area, and there is. Yeah. But we're looking for a specific skill set in this project with people with heavy truck industry experience. Right. And they're very hard to find. So we do yeah. a search throughout the United States to find some of these people, and we're very happy to have some of them move to Novi and to hire local talent. So why Novi? Why why Novi in particular? Uh, simple reason is my boss lives here. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good enough. It's good enough reason. And it, another big important part of the why we chose Novi is a very strong Asian presence here. Sure. Right now, our primary customer is in China, mm -hmm. and so when we have them visit here, they're very comfortable. And Novi's made a, a big extension to the Asian market: Japanese, Chinese, Korean. Yeah. And so when they're put up in the hotels and they're going around to the local businesses, it's easier. It's easier for them. Yeah, is the is the market the mining market in China that uh, that extensive that big? I mean, there are there other countries that are doing this kind of work that your trucks could be beneficial for? Absolutely. Um, the only areas in the United States that we would be able to sell these trucks would be out west. Okay. Uh, where the big mines are in the Gillette, Wyoming, Arizona sure. area, on up through northern uh, British Columbia, all the right. way down to Mexico. There's a large growing market for these off-highway vehicles down in Brazil. And then the untapped markets are India, Asia, Africa. Wow. So there's a lot of growth. It's very slow but steady. And as we continue to increase our population, you need more energy. So coal mining is one of our predominant industries that we're working with. Excellent. Very interesting stuff. We're going to go from this high level to a little bit more technical okay. after this break. But thank you for taking the thank time you to, for coming uh, out. to talk to me. And we'll be right back. Don't go away. I'm, I'm Mayor Pro Tem Dave Stout. I'm addicted to volleyball and not drugs. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Hi, I'm Cody, and I'm addicted to texting, not drugs. Welcome back, everybody. Again, this is Corporate Review, and I'm Ira Tapuzian, and we're still here at Detroit Heavy Truck Engineer. God's mouthful. But I've got one of the head engineers here, Suresh. Hi, Ira. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So this is uh, all interesting stuff. You know, I talked to Donna earlier about the, the, the type of business that these trucks are used, and maybe talk a bit about what goes into making these trucks. Okay. The first step we do is consider all the load conditions for this off-highway yep. equipment. This example is uh, our mining truck. Right. Okay. And uh, this, uh, it's a heavy duty, extremely high capacity sure. mining truck. So what you see on the screen is the, all the road conditions and the, how the vehicle performs on those conditions. Right. So this is how you start. Yeah. 
So you put this together and then and then just really modify. Do you have to change that depending on where these trucks are going to be used? Yes, it depends on the mines and okay. uh, what conditions they work on. Okay. And um, most of the conditions are pretty similar okay. unless they are high altitude and uh, some other specific conditions. So do you have to go, do you have to have necessarily the topography of the mining area in order to to design such a such a truck? Yes, if it goes to some high altitude like Chile. Yep. And that's, those are special conditions. Okay. Yeah, and then we have to configure the engines and uh, how the engine performs right. at that altitude. Okay. And we have to adjust all the parameters. And what we had talked about earlier, you know, obviously these are not lightweight yeah. <laughs> by any by any means. With your background, you know, as an engineer, and, and we're going to take a look and see more of the team here. You know, we, we always talk about for, for, you know, the vehicles we drive to work every day that they need to be lighter and yeah. everybody's trying to be lighter, it's cheaper and, and it's better. Is that is that even possible with a truck like this? It plays a very important role in these trucks. Okay. The reason is, is the payload that right. is, you know, every hour, how much payload they're transferring from okay. one end to the other end. So if I reduce one ton from the vehicle, they can carry one ton more sure. payload. Sure. So that's the key. How do you do something like that? Or oh, I mean, it changes the whole name. Don't tell Donna, but then you'd have to get rid of the heavy in the word to train uh, heavy truck. So this is where all the modern technology comes into picture. Right. For example, this in the old days, we used to do all the hand calculations. Yeah. Now we do all the computer simulation. Okay. and uh, optimize the entire structure and make it lightweight and strong enough to last for 10 years. And obviously this is a, a, a product that's not shipped all together. It's many different components and uh, parts it to it. It depends on the size of the vehicle. Okay. For smaller trucks, you can do that. Yeah. For heavier trucks, you have to um, take them apart right. and ship them in uh, smaller assemblies Okay. and then put you know, reassemble them at the site. Are those parts coming from around the world or? Yes, they do. Okay, very good. Well, we're going to go walk and, okay. and look at more of uh, your team here that helped sure. put all this together. Suresh, this is part of your team. Talk about what goes on here. This is the mechanical engineering group. Yep. And uh, we have the most experienced, talented group here in our company. They said these earlier are the this key was the people. first time they heard this. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> yes, these are key these people. These are the key people who design the entire structural part of the vehicle. Okay. okay. They are, they take care of the, all the mainframe mm -hmm. and the superstructure, axle box, the dump body, yep. and the cab, right. and everything that is needed in the Sure. Uh, in the vehicle. There's got to be extensive continued training that goes on for, for these folks, I would imagine, as, as technology changes. We talked a little yes. bit earlier about you know making things lighter and, and so forth. So yes. the, these guys have probably always got to be really up on. Yes. To our advantage, most of them are extremely talented and experienced engineers. Right. And um, they are very enthusiastic and they're extremely happy to work on these challenging projects. Sure. You know. and you know, without any guidance, they will handle yeah. everything. How long does it take to design one of these trucks from beginning to end, roughly? How, how long would it take to, to do one of these? Well, um, typically for a major company, it may take three years. Right. But the first truck we dealt with, we designed yeah. and rolled out of the shop one day short of one year. Okay. So that's more like a record for yeah. any company. Sure. And uh, as we are progressing, we are cutting down that time and of we course. are becoming very popular. And uh, many clients are coming and asking us to design more vehicles for them. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Why do you like this job, Suresh? What, what, what about this is, uh, makes it fun for you to come to work every day? Oh, this is a very challenging job. Okay. And uh, everybody is given a task and they're all very excited to be in charge of the entire and they're you know, part of the right. project. 
and the, at the end, they get to see this in a pra in the vehicle sure. come to life, and uh, keeps it fresh a, and yes, fun. Yes, great. If folks want more information, you're on the internet. Where can they go and uh, take a look? They can go to www.dhtellc.com. Excellent. Yeah. You did terrific. Thank and you. And you were worried earlier. You did such a good I'm time. I'm still worried. Well, you're an engineer. All engineers worry. <laughs> On that note, that's about all the time we have for today at Corporate Review. Again, I'm Ara Tapuzian. If you want more information on Novi's economic development's goals and strategies, we invite you to visit investnovi.org. Until next time, thank you.